Okay. All right, Don, what are we talking about tonight? Well, I was going to talk about honey. I was pulling some honey, and I was going to bring up my stuff, but I forgot it back there, and it's storming, so I'm not going to go back to the bee lab. But <clears throat> you don't have to buy a whole lot of expensive stuff. You could basically use a bread knife. You could use a fillet knife, as long as you're careful. Uh, you can use a scratcher, and I don't know if a lot of people still remember the Afro pick. An Afro pick is a good thing to unscratch your uh, honey, and it's cheap. Uh, I got a uh, uncapping plane that I was going to show everybody, and I've uncapped honey for many years. I thought it was the rave. Everybody says you got to have one of these deals. Well, I bought it, and you should have heard me cussing. I burnt the inside of my thumb really bad, and I'm a big guy, so. That is one thing that is a total piece of crap out there. And if a woman is trying to use it to uncap, she's going to burn the inside of her, her uh, thumb. It's so big, it's so bulky. I would say it weighs at least three pounds. Uh, I'll try to bring it up for the next uh, show we do. But I found a regular bed, bread knife. Uh, you can uncap just as good. You can have a little hot plate there with a kettle in it and just keep water hot and just have a paper towel there, or you could use a, a terry cloth towel. And as you take it out of your water, just wipe it on that uh, uh, towel there, and you'll get that moisture off of it. Works fine. You don't have to spend a lot of money, and you can actually do crush and strain. Right now, we've got, uh, I guess we brought in about 10 gallons, and couple of them, I just cut the frames out and just let it drop in there and just chop it up a little bit, let it drain. Time costs more than the honey does for me. But now my son stood back there and he spun it by hand. And we had uh, two students here from Texas and they was amazed to see starter strips that didn't blow out in deep frames. The main trick of, of extracting is to turn it one way slow until you see honey running down the inside of your extract. Then reverse it, and then slowly build up the RPMs. You're going to go real fast. That's got a hand crank on it. It's a Max Ant 20-frame extractor. It does mediums, deeps, and uh, shallows. But if you're going to make money in beekeeping, shallows, total waste of money. Mediums and deeps, that's where you want to go. They actually have four frames. They got uh, Illinois medium, which is uh, it's about a 7-inch or 7 and an 8-inch frame. And then they got the five and a quarter, I guess, or five and an eighth frame. We use the six and a quarter and the nine and eight. Those are the standard frames. That way you can sell mediums, you can sell deeps. And uh, I thought I'd reveal a little trick that I'm doing right now is instead of setting up all your mediums to sell, what I'm doing is putting a medium on a bottom board and I'm putting a deep over the top. That way, if a customer comes up and changes their mind, which happened last week, we had a guy come, wanted a bunch of uh, deeps, and he changed his mind to mediums. All you have to do is put the queen in the, the one you want. If you want deeps, you put the five frames with the queen with that. You want mediums, the other way around. Uh, and then as soon as the customer leaves, you can either throw a cell in there, or you can put another laying queen in there from the mating noose, it, which is a, it's a way you can go either way and make double the money. And uh, I bought a bunch of cells from a fella in uh, Florida. And I was surprised they all hatched out within probably three hours of one another. And uh, some people are a little leery of it. I bought uh, queen cells from him probably three or four years ago. And I think he's got his act together a whole lot better. The cells cost $4 each, and by the time you paid shipping, air freighted up overnight, it was almost, a, well, it was 570 cents, I think it was, which, you know, it seems like a lot of money, but you're selling queens for $30. If you sell 20 of them, that's $600. Now you've got 80, that's complete mistakes if, you know, they don't hatch. But I think the ratio right now, I went through some, we got them Friday. And I think I'm running probably 80% of the ones I checked right now. There was some, I just, in fact, the two fellows from uh, Texas, 
they looked in some of the hives. I took a frame of honey and one shake of bees, which was less than a cup of bees, and put a queen cell that was ready to hatch, and they was totally amazed. The queen stayed there and, you know, just a frame of honey. So you could basically take a double deep tin with a super on it. you got 30 frames and basically make 25 to 28 splits. The whole trick is get good, dependable cells. Now, there are several people out there that mail cells, but, you know, I'm not going to say which ones to buy from, which ones not. That's just up to you to kind of pick what you want. Uh, always improve your stuff. And that's why I'm buying cells from this fella here to, to improve my stock a little more. So if anybody's got any questions on any of that, I'm open for answering. All right. We've got a couple people with their hands raised already. Okay. Uh, Sean, let's start with you. Go ahead. Hey, Don. How's it going? Hey. Um, so I put uh, five packages in on April 15th, and three of them are just gangbusters, you know, lights out. I'm feeding them all from the same uh, feed bucket, of course, as far as where their feed comes from. They have their own feeders. Um, and two of them are just crap. I mean, they haven't even gotten a full frame out of five uh, drawn out. And I was wondering if there was something I could do about that or if I just need to consider a queen lure. Uh, you're talking about a package you put in or are you talking about a swarm you've caught? Uh, packages that I put in. Did you buy the packages from me? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, sometimes if you're putting a lot of packages in, you have to stagger where you're putting them in. You've probably seen videos of my bee yard. We put in, I think, the last week in, I think it was the last week in, or the second to the last week in April. We put in 75 packages. And what I do on my stance is I put one maybe at one end, and then I skip a row, or I'll skip two rows. And I'll put 75, I mean, probably in an hour, an hour and a half. Okay. The thing is, you get probably got drifting. What I would do is, if your queen, did she come out already yet, or is she still in the cage? No, they're all five are out. Um, they are on separate stands. Yeah. Uh, they're probably, I don't know, 15 yards apart. Well, the distance really don't make any difference, but what you could do is you're always going to run the risk of killing a queen. You could take the weak one and swap the position into another one where you got a stronger one and hope field bees will build it up because basically what you got is drifting. But when you do that, take into consideration that it's only a 50% chance, you know, that they're going to make it. It's a possibility that they can kill the queen. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's don't. Everything in beekeeping is not in stone, it changes all the time. Right. Um, so I picked up some, uh, like, I guess you would call them started packages today. Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to be a uh, natural foundation. Mm -hmm. When I got them home, I opened them up and found plastic. Natural uh, plastic. Right. What tree does that grow on? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I think it grows right beside a rubber tree. Mm. But uh, how do, do I just basically discard everything that they've done to this point? to get them to the uh, natural? If you bought them uh, with the pretest that, you know, this was all natural, I would confront whoever you bought them from and ask them. Oh, now, be, being said like that now, I, I don't get a chance to watch the internet, but there's a fella that come up here, bought like four queens from me, took a day's class, and now he's advertising, and what burnt me up is, He's advertised and he's got my stock. So if you buy just queens from anybody, you don't really have their stock. Right. But the tip of the iceberg was one of the students showed me a video of him. He had probably 100 packages in his store and saying, these came from Fat Bee Man's yard. And I have not sold him one package, but he's advertising them as my bees. Ooh. So I don't know. You need to, when someone says they got my stock, if you're, you know, in doubt, you can always email me or ask the fella, where did they actually come from? Well, I don't mind helping anybody out, but when you outline, you know, just plain lie to people, 
if he come and bought the packages from me, and then he said it wouldn't be a problem, but he bought the package evidently from somebody else and passed them off as my stock. Right. These are, uh, these are your stock. The ones oh, that he, I, he bought the pack. You got packages from me, from some, somebody else? Yes. Where, where are you at? I'm, I'm in Northeast Ohio, but oh. I took a hundred mile drive today to go get them. Oh, you went over to see it, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Matt's got my stock. Joe's got stock there for me. I mean, there's, a lot of my students are on the web page as having my stock and, and being students. All right. I think that's about all I have okay. tonight. Okay. Thanks, Don. Okay. All right. And Paul is stuck in traffic, but he's calling in. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> Don, how you doing? Okay. Oh, I tell you, I wish I made it home in time. But in uh, <laughs> any case, I don't know if you remember, but I was talking about I had two packages and I bought three nukes. The packages are doing way better than the nukes. I open up the nukes this weekend and I find nothing but queen cells in two of them. Is that good right. or bad? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I found out this weekend that I'm totally inexperienced. I, you know, do I leave these queen cells in there? Well, if you're wanting to build uh, a bunch of numbers up, it, you bought the nukes from me or you bought them from somebody else? No, no. I got them from up north from Better B. I well, tell you, I'm really disappointed. Well, a lot of times uh, people don't understand how things are actually done. Uh, that they, they might have pulled a frame from two or three different hives and combined them and just – was the queen in a cage when you got it or was it walking? No, it was walking. Well, it's possible that you may bump the nuke or something when you took it home or they bumped it. But, you know, when you get a bunch of lemons, make some lemonade out of it. I mean, I would just let them develop. And if you got a nuke with cells in it, you probably could make a minimum five, ten splits off of it. Well, I wasn't looking to make any splits, but I took a bunch of the queen cells out. I left a few in there. But now, when they when they emerge, are they is the first queen going to kill the other cells, or how is that going to work? Sometimes you can get in there before they go around. I've gotten hives out here where I've gotten five and six, and sometimes they hatch out together. Sometimes you see the first one hatch out, and you take a little steak knife and cut the rest out and move them. But I would not have gotten rid of those extra ones. The packages that are doing good, you could hook a queen cell put it up against the side of your box, put a frame of honey and shake part of one of those packages into it or a frame from that package. You could have took a bad situation and made it a wonderful situation. Well, I'm sure by next week, I'll probably have a bunch more in there. I actually cut one cell out and the queen came right out of the freaking cell. That's great. That's good experience. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't take three or four hundred dollars and throw it on the ground and walk away with it, would you? Yeah. Well, I see, tell you. all the cells are money. Don't look at them as they're bad. Make use of them. So you're saying I could have took one of those cells, put it on a frame, and shook some bees in there, and I would have had another uh, nuke going? Exactly what I do right here. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see. <laughs> you know, I could yesterday I posted yesterday I posted a video on the uh, on the group page on Facebook, and I mean I had a shitload of bees on one of the hives, and everybody was commenting, "Oh, I should have opened up the entrance a little more," but I don't think that was the problem. I think I had a swarm leaving that hive. Well, I run across that on a regular basis, and when people start giving you advice. When you go to listen to it, the first thing you need to ask them is, do they make a living at what they're doing? Do they have a full-time job? And how many hives they run and how many bees they buy every year? So people give a lot of bad information out there. So that's why I spend my time here trying to help people be successful. And if you're reading anything on my group, there's many a person on there saying they started with two to four, three, maybe four nukes, and they got 20, 30 of them already. And everything I'm telling you, you don't have to buy. It's cheap, and it works. Yep, yep. So, um, well, I didn't open up the entrance because the nights here, uh, 
in New York, they still get down into the forties and I didn't want to, I didn't want to go wide open with the entrance yet. I mean, it's only a three week old hive. So I just left it the way it was, but getting back to those queen cells, I mean, from, you know, if I come up next week and I, and I check my bees out and I see a bunch of cells in there again, you know, should I, should I cut a few out or should I just leave it alone and let the new queen emerge? If you don't want a lot of hives, then leave them alone. All right. Let and nature take swarm, its course. Are they? Well, I mean, will they swarm? They have to fly out and mate. So are your definition of swarming, you know, if they're replacing a queen or subdividing, if the box is too small and they're already outgrowed it, yeah, it'll be a swarm. But if you've damaged a queen and you've got cells, they're going to go out, mate, come back in the same box. Yeah, yeah. Well, I put a just the nuke box out, and I figured, you know, God forbid it swarms while I'm not there. At least maybe I'll end up catching it, so I'll hope for the best. It's a learning curve. Everybody has to go through it. I go through it all the time. It's constant. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to give the other folks a chance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave early. Uh, I'll probably watch the meeting, uh, the recorded version. I'm still sitting in traffic. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. You too. Thank, thanks for the advice. Okay. All right. Anthony, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, Dawn, I was thinking about you yesterday. You know, I was oh. out there. <laughs> I, I've only got three hives. And when I got done going through three hives, uh, filling the feed is and everything. I'm soaking wet and I'm exhausted. And my wife said, are you okay? I said, yeah, but geez, I don't know how these guys do it. Like, and I said, she knows who you are. And I said, you know, this guy goes out here and he does this all day, probably six, seven days a week. You know, it's not easy, <laughs> not easy for me anyway, an old man like me. <laughs> but, uh, what I want to say is <clears throat> When I took my five frame nukes and I put them in an eight frame box and I added some frames, actually, I let me ask you this question first. So I have a five frame nuke and I'm putting it in an eight frame box. Should I check aboard that when I put it in or put the frames on the outside and leave the five frames, you know, like the, the five frames, the brood and everything together? Well, here's the whole thing. The way I would do things and the way you're doing things, my experience, my location, your experience, your location, it's hard to say. But what my, it would give advice to people that's got local weather, same as mine, is I would put them together and then just put two on one side and then let them expand that way. If you've got some experience, then I would checkerboard them. Just in an eight frame, I'd add three, but I'd go in – Put one frame of brood or a frame of honey against the wall. Put an empty one with a starter strip, and then do the other on the other side. But oh. if you get cold nights, you know I could give you advice, and maybe there's a guy listening to this in Wisconsin, and right now in, in Colorado, somebody sent me an email. They was getting queens, and it's snowing out there. What could they do? So this telecast goes everywhere. So what I'm saying is, you have to do local weather and what's going on. Okay. If you make mistakes, it's a learning thing. I mean, that's all this beekeeping stuff is. It's not a, a science. It's down in stone. It changes year by year and season by season, weather, everything. Yeah, I understand. And then uh, the other thing that I realized is I, I bought frames from two different places here. And uh, one group of frames, I bought like 10 or something. They were waxed and wired. And then I bought frames from another place, and those were shipped to me. And most likely, I made the mistake, but um, I ended up with plastic. So I have waxed and wired natural in there, and I have the plastic. Mm -hmm. DP, some of them have been in there for like a month. When I picked that frame up, there's bees all over it, especially on the inboard side. But they're not building any. So, and I understand that they're not going to build if they don't need anything. But here's what I saw. 
Right now, I have those plastic frame feeders that have two compartments in there. I'm waiting for something bigger that I can put more in. But I've got a frame feeder in there, and they built beautiful comb off the bottom of that frame feeder because it's only about five, five inches deep, right? They built beautiful comb on the bottom of that feeder. So I said, well, it looks like they're not going to do anything with this wax or this plastic. So I took it out, and I put in foundationless frame, nothing. Just put it in there, and it might have been three or four days before I looked at it, and the girls were on there. They had beautiful comb, maybe halfway down on that already in just no more than four days. And I'm thinking maybe they use the groove in the top as the center because it's it's right in the center. It's nice and straight. It's beautiful. So I think from that, when I put a you frame... Think those in, bees are telling you something? Yeah, they're telling me they don't like plastic and they don't like wax. We want to do it our way, the way we've been doing it for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it should be, I think. So I'm going to, when I put a frame in from now on, I'm just going to go foundationless and put it in there. Well, if you got going foundationless, if you got two frames in there that's drawn out, and then you drop a frame in there, they will draw it out fairly straight and uniform. But yeah. if you go all foundationless, sometimes they get crisscross. That's one reason I like to use a about an inch and a half starter strip. It yeah. gives them a because they have to festoon or they they hang, and when they're hanging in groups like that, it's called festooning, and that's when they build wax. They the wax glands work. Well, I see them doing that a lot. You know, I didn't know it was festooning. It was like they're all chained together. Yeah, uh, I see that a lot. We was checking uh, cells that was hatching, and there's a lot of times that in discussion, I remember things because I'm getting old. I forget things. And one, this, we was looking for queens that was hatched out, and there was a big festooning group there hanging from a frame. And the student said, I'll bet the queen's in there. And I said, in all the time that I've been keeping bees, festooning bees that's hanging in a group will not hang with the queen. She'll be off on, on foundation or a starter strip by herself or with the bees with her, not in a group hanging like that. The exception would be a ball on the bottom of the, fray, uh, the, on the bottom board or if they're protecting her like that, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's it for now. Let okay. someone else ask the question. Go ahead. And let's see. Andrew, go ahead. Good evening, Don. How are you doing tonight? Okay. How about you? Not bad at all. So I'm, I'm continuing with kind of the theme of what I've been asking about, which is queen rearing. Um, I'm too lazy to graft. Don't want to screw with it. I got a couple of... Uh, crossbar frames that are designed for JCBZ cups. And I saw you did a video where you were taking cut strips of comb and essentially affixing those strips of comb to those frames using um, hot wax. Uh, no, I was using, uh, you mean the cups or just a cutting a strip out of the frame? Cutting a strip out of the frame. Okay. No, well, no cups. That was basically done. I was doing a class back there and I had, uh, I guess two or three younger people there. And then these two older guys came back there. They was picking up some queens. So they come back to talk to me. And then we got talking. They was wanting to learn how to graph. And the one fellow said, well, this is good because you fellows can see you're a lot younger. We have trouble seeing. So I said, well, wait a minute. I got my camera. I said, I'll show you a way a blind person can make some cells. You just take a frame and you cut a, like a one inch strip there. Take the same cell bars, we put three bars to a frame, and just push down on the bar about every inch. First, I said, how many uh, cells you need a week or a month? He said, well, five or ten is plenty. So he come back, he tried that method. He said, why in the world has other people not showed people that? He said, it absolutely worked. <laughs> he said, I had four queens on one bar and three on another. He said, that was more than I could use. So... So, so my question specifically on that is with the eggs, because I know that grafting, you have to worry about humidity and dehydration. Are right. those eggs sen sensitive to humidity, temperature, 
light, sound, bad jokes. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> you what, 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 what do I need to worry about? I'll watch a couple of my posts on the, on the uh, Facebook group. There are plenty of bad jokes. Okay, well, here's the thing. How long does it take you to lay a frame sideways on the top of your hive, cut one, a strip like that, push it down? I'll bet you could do it in five to ten seconds and then insert yeah. that frame back into a hive. Now, how is it going to dry out? How is it going to overheat or chill? I mean, you're not going to make a lot, right. but you're not investing nothing. Right. Right. I've got a hive. I'm going to be doing that this week then. Okay. I, there's another way. There's there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Now, you can cut about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three-quarter strip, and just take the comb and set it horizontally with the cells. You want to get a frame that's got eggs and real, real young larvae in. And look for eggs, and then look just for white milk at the bottom. Cut you a strip out and stand all that comb up between two frames and put the comb vertically so the cells are pointing straight up and down. Mm -hmm. That's a no-brainer. I mean, they will make queen cells. Now, just take a sharp knife, and if they have some that's two or three together, just cut them out as a group. They'll, they'll fight it out. I mean, that's a no-brainer, and you can make, and you're not investing one penny. Yeah. That I too. just don't want to screw with cups in that whole system. It just well, seems like too much work. The whole thing about it is I'm giving you advice. I'm giving you tools to make a living without spending money. All that stuff out there is going to spend money. Any of those kits, a Jenner system, a Nick Cot system, you've got to cage the queen in that box. And if you can't pick a queen yep. up, and even if you can put her in the box, she can lay 100 of them eggs out probably in about 20 minutes. So what's she going to do when you decide to go back in there? Her ovaries stop, and then you're going to ask her to do the same process again mm -hmm. in another three weeks. The process of starting and stopping them ovaries will cause her to fail really early on you. Let nature do itself. Work with it, not against it. Thank you. That answers my okay. question. Okay. Uh, Ro? Go ahead. Uh, hang on one second. You caught me with my mouth full. Uh-oh. <laughs> what do we have? <laughs> uh, Burger King. Burger I, King. Um, Not good uh, for you. Four questions. Uh, first one comes from my grandfather. He's got a tick problem all of a sudden around his beehive, and he's scared to do anything about it, but he keeps getting ticks when he goes to check the hive. Um, is there anything he can use that won't be dangerous to the bees? I know he, he used cinnamon to get rid of the ants, and that worked. Is there something he can use to help run the ticks off? Is there trees that he's brushing up against, or has he got high weeds around the hives? It's right in a pretty well manicured yard. There's maybe a couple of trees, but not many. I'll tell you one thing that I've had a lot of people say it does work. Whether you want to do it or not, that's up to you. You can get a dog flea collar and put it around each ankle. Keep your socks, you know, pulled up over your pants. That seems to, for some people, work. Whether I'd want to do it, I'd rather pick a tick off than have that poison on my ankles. Okay. Um, the other question we had, we had uh, the slow hive that we were saying was doing really weak last week when we talked to y'all, the, the uh, package that was not doing so well, she quit laying altogether. Um, and we gave it some more feed in the feeder to see if she'd still laying. She, she never did. Um, so you got enough bees in that hive? There's not a lot of bees in the hive now. There were when she first quit laying, but they seem to be, they seem to be uh, leaving after she quit laying. What Maybe you're tell. getting a, a mite problem. Mite problem, okay. Because, you know, sometimes you don't know what's going on around your neighborhood. You might have some commercial beekeepers that are not treating, and maybe you're getting mites flying or brought back by your bees. Okay. Try reversing your hives. That might bring the population up and get her to land again. Okay. Well, um, we, we ordered a queen to, to replace her just in case. There's no, uh, there's no brood now. It's just honey. So. Well, if you got to that point, 
personally, I think you're wasting your money because if you put 10 new queens in there, it's not going to do no good unless you've got the population. She's not going to lay until there's population to take care of it. Okay. My your best question, bet would be take a frame from your other hive that's got bees on it that's hatching, put it in with it, and then maybe she'll start laying because you've got young bees that'll be nurse bees. Okay. Um, that's what we'll do. I'll, I think we'll just take uh, maybe two frames from the other hive to make sure there's enough and put it in with the queen okay. when it comes. But uh, the other question, one of our, one of our uh, virgin, first virgin queen hatched out of one of the two cells that we got last week. But if her, we're kind of in an argument between my brother and I. It doesn't really look all that queen like to me. She does look a different color than the other bees. And they seem to be paying a lot of attention to her, clustering around her and everything. But it does, she doesn't have a very long tail. But I know they don't need to develop as much until they meet. So um, I'm kind of concerned that maybe that's not the queen and maybe uh, it didn't work. It did, she definitely hatched out of the cell because it's just a little round hole in the bottom of it. Yeah, but she probably has. I don't them. really see a bee that looks very queen. Well, I just don't see one that looks like a, a queen in the mating nuke there. When mating. you're uh, when so. you first start out and you're you're an inexperienced beekeeper, it's hard to spot a queen. You know, once you get a little experience, you'll spot them right away. But she's not going to develop out until she gets you know mated. Okay. Well, that's what it looks like to me. There's there's one bee that the bees definitely are paying more attention to. So I'm kind of thinking that's her. The other one has not hatched out yet. She was capped on 8th of the night. Is it if too you, late? If you got one that's hatched out there, you talk about the same hive or you got two different we, ones? We put one. As soon as she hatched out, we moved the frame that had the... Uh, I mean, we cut the cell out of that frame and put it in another mating nuke with other bees. Yeah. It, but it and they they waxed it the wall, um, but it has not had out yet, and uh, it's been since the eighth of the ninth, so it's been about ten days. Okay. But they're plugged on it thick, but it still hasn't hatched out. Has that been too long? If they p attached it a little bit extra wax to the thing, that's good. If there's bees on it. It's good. You might have your timing off. Okay. If the bees are not walking on the cell or paying any attention to it, then it's either chilled or it just died. Okay. How many days do we need to wait before we just give up and on that main nuke? When, how many days ago did you put the cell on the wall? Ten. It's been ten days. Well... It takes 16 days when you uh, get an egg to a queen. You might have three or four days, you might be off there. They might have took a, a, a early, early egg and made a queen out of it. If they took a larva that's three days or four days, it's gonna be three days or four days earlier. Okay. I would All wait, right. as long as there's bees on it, it's good sell. Okay, all right, thank you. I think okay. that's all the, the questions I had. Okay. Okay. Uh, Patricia, go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, you were talking about buying queen cells, and I'm still ro watching Roe eating. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, there you go. There's Don again. <laughs> he was on my screen putting French fries in his mouth. Um, <laughs> you were talking about buying queen cells and bringing them home and putting them in. And <coughs> so, are you concerned about? Uh, genetics, like if you're not sure you have enough drones available, um, what are your, how do you figure out genetics for those queens when they emerge? What are they going to be? Um, are they wild mating or what, what's going on with that? Well, if you've seen videos of my bee yard, you know, we bring in bees from our other yards. We probably got eight yards different yards around here. So we bring bees from there all the time over here. So you're bringing drones and, you know, and then we're buying bees. So we like to mix the genetics up. But uh, as far as picking what you want, I bought certified Russian from Russian breeders and mm -hmm. I've had terrible luck with them. I bought different ones from different kinds. 
there's certain ones I have good luck with, and there's certain ones they couldn't pay me to even try their bees. I don't need that genetics in my yard. It has been uh, overcast and drizzling most of the day, and I had two people here today that they have never, ever seen a package. They bought packages from their bee clubs and stuff, and they wanted some packages. So I shook them a three-pound package, and I went into three different hives, and I shook frames from three different hives. And then I come up, and I put a can of syrup in there, and I put the queen on a piece of vinyl. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, I don't know, it's not vinyl. It's a plastic straps that go around your, your uh, frames. And I stapled it to the box. And then I handed it to them, and they picked it up. At first, when he watched me shake it, and they said, how can you even guess it? I said, I've shook a lot of packages. <laughs> and they said, it didn't feel like three pounds. And then when I put it together and put the can in, they said, that feels like seven pounds now. So... <laughs> And then they says, no one in our bee club has actually seen a package that was shook from the start to the finish. And they looked at the bottom and they said, they're used to getting packages with a half inch to an inch of dead bees. And they said there wasn't three or four dead bees in there. So that was an experience for those two fellows there that they've never seen. If you ever get a chance to watch someone shake you a package, it's a learning experience. And what's more fun than that, these two guys didn't have their bee suit on. One was holding the funnel, and the other one was putting the lid on the box to keep the bees in. <laughs> then you, each time you shake, you've got to bump them in the bottom of the package, and then you've got to put that little closure on the top to keep them from coming out until yeah, I get yeah. the next frame to shake. But it's an experience. Everybody should try it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. John Roten, go ahead. Hey Don, I, hey. I, I want to find out something. I've I've had about four hives since uh, the spring to go down on me. Uh, one of them was a ten frame. There's a double box that you know I told you about it before. I didn't know if maybe the queen went bad, but it kept getting smaller and smaller. But every one of them, I guess it's hive beetles. I mean, I'll see a lot of larvae crawling around on the bottom, but. The queen, I, I will, you know, starting out, they've got brood, you know, um, uh, sealed brood and all, and I guess they hatch out, and then I'll keep seeing some larvae, but they get smaller and smaller, and I quit. How often are you going sealed. clear to the bottom of your hive, all the way to the bottom board, and checking it and cleaning it out? Uh, I'm going in about every two to three days. All and the way I'm to the bottom. I can see. Well, they're just, these here are just single, uh, like one uh, today, I think that was a, a half frame that only had four frames in it, and one of them just had a starter strip. And they kept going down the, the uh, day before yesterday. The bees robbed them out, so I went back, or yesterday. So today I went back and took the queen out. And there wasn't but a handful of bees left. So I put them with another frame of a brood in a cage right now, and they're with them. What but are you treating I, your hives with? Uh, what am I treating them with? Yeah. I'm not treating them with anything other than, you know, with oxalic acid. If you're using oxalic acid and your populations is dropping that bad, something, you got, you got the wrong product or something. Oxalic acid, you shouldn't have no uh, dead bees or your population dropping. The only other thing is... Uh -huh. uh, Maybe they're swarming out on you, or something is in there picking off your pop, your population. Well, the only thing I can figure is it's got to be the high bills, but I never really see them up on the cone. I'm just seeing them in the, on the bottom board. No, I don't believe it's high beetles because really? you probably could ask 20 of my students. Uh, I've got hives out here that are not strong in the pine trees, one, oh. maybe two, or three beetles. Now, if you're saying you see worms, that takes at least seven to ten days to develop. So evidently you're not going clear to the bottom and you're not scraping the bottom up. You got to look at that bottom board. If you see flakes well, of wax, scrape them out. If you see black specks, okay. that's wax moth eggs. Okay, well now no, I hadn't been cleaning the bottom board, you but I've been looking. Nah. The, okay. Just peeking down through the frames ain't gonna get it. You've got to take two or three okay. frames and physically look because something okay. is knocking I've, it down, and I think that's what it is. Well, how often should I be doing the oxalic acid right now? 
once a month should be more than enough for mites if that's your problem. Yeah. But your populations, well, I, mean, I, I don't know why they're I, going down. Yeah, I'm not seeing any mites at all. Well, when you see mites, believe me, it's already too late. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep playing with them, but, I, you know. The, Are you running 10-frame uh, boxes or are you running all five-frame stuff? I'm running both, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting them in bigger boxes as they get bigger. Uh, I had one that was in an eight-frame box that they filled it up, so I checkerboard and put another box on it. And they went down to nothing real quick. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to try that anymore. Something's not right when you checkerboard and they go down. It sounds like you missed a queen cell and they swarmed on you. Hmm. Well. Are you wearing I, a veil when you do all this or are you wearing nothing? I'm wearing a veil. Either buy you a new veil or one you can see through. Uh -huh. because you're wearing a veil, you're only going to see 50%. And I'd almost guarantee if anybody's look, looking through a veil, you're not going to see those little black specks on the bottom of beehive. That's what you have to watch for. When you see that, you have to clean them out. The little black specks. They look like pepper, black pepper at the bottom of the hive. That's the early mm -hmm. stages. When you see worms, that's more advanced. And is that hive beetles? Is that what that is? The black, the black specks is going to be wax moth. But if you don't wax. scrape the bottom out, the bees are constantly making wax platelets, and they fall off their abdomen, and they'll build up uh -huh. on your bottom board. And if you've got an entrance reducer in there, they build up so much faster. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm training people out here, and I, I have to keep after all the time what, you know, when they open a hive, what you see on the bottom. You know, what color was the queen? Just to go mm -hmm. in the hive and go through everything from one end to the other, all you're doing is moving stuff around. You're not observing nothing. First mm -hmm. thing you got to look at is that bottom board. If it's getting trash on it, clean it out. If you can't clean okay. it out, get another hive and set it in its place and frame by frame go through it. Okay. The That's only reason that they're going downhill is you either have mites or they're, they're leaving on you or you got something out there, predator. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to pay more attention to that then because I haven't, I mean, I've only been cleaning that bottom board when I've seen worms on it. Well, Lord that's me. too late. That's way too late. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that, I'm missing it. See, I don't know. So, yeah. thank well, you. Well, you, you have to go in and clean through it. Okay. I'll try to do better. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Uh, Ernest, you're up next. Yeah. Good evening, Don. Good evening. Uh, I'll be coming down to see you on the 30th. So, uh, I've got, uh, I started off with six eyes and I've got 24, uh, nukes now. Okay. So, well, you don't I, need to come see me then. You're already doing it good. No, no. I, I need something technical advice. <laughs> I don't have nothing technical. <laughs> the, uh, I put queen cells in this time and hopefully they'll take cause we had like 90 degree temperature here and, uh, it's been quite warm, and I did put them up top, so uh, hopefully this time I'll, I'll take and I'll be able to get some more that way. But what I was going to ask you, i uh, uh not going to be here for a couple of weeks, so uh, I put uh, uh, an extra uh, super, uh, super whatever on, uh, on those. Uh, so when I come back, can I separate those again? I put it on so they wouldn't swarm while I was going away. Uh, could I separate those and then make those into hives if they have eggs in them? Why would you need eggs? If you got cells, you don't need the eggs. Yeah, I figured, the, yeah, if I have cells, but uh, it might not be cells when I come back if they have all that extra room. Well, if you want to make a bunch of numbers, you can buy cells. I mean, if you're capable of building the boxes, you know, if you got 23 or 30 some right now, you could basically run to 100, 150 first or second split. A lot of my splits out here just got one framing and just a, a five or six inch patch of honey, and I threw a cell in. Buying a bunch of cells that from a, a reputable person, I bought cells from several people, and some just ain't worth a two. 
And then I bought some from this one fella. Now, usually you get about 95, 98% hatch. But now you got to have a, a box to put them in. You know, a five frame box with one frame, a cell, shake some bees in there. These cells will hatch within 12 hours. And this fella is fairly good. Most of the cells will come out within one to three hours time frame. And he can get you a hundred or a thousand. They'll basically all come out in that time frame. Well, that sounds good. How much, uh, how much they cost, you say? Th that fellow that I bought the last batch, he had them air shipped up to me, and it was fi 570 cents. So it basically you got $5 in. And that's what I was showing a uh, couple of students that was up here today. For $500, that's 100 cells. And if you're selling your queens thirty dollars, twenty of them is six hundred. You already made a profit. You could afford to lose eighty of them. I give half of them to my son, so he's running those mini nukes behind his house. Now he's on a quarter acre, and he's got two hundred mini nukes behind his house. Then just down the road, then he's got all his eight frame stuff set up there. Okay, well that sounds interesting. Make That's for you sure. Know, I think L's been to a couple of our different yards. Uh, you know, if you have to sit down, I sit down a lot of times. I got a bad back, but, <clears throat> you know, you'll get exposed to a lot of different techniques and stuff here. Jim's well, here. He'll, he'll tell you, you got to walk fast to keep up with the old man. <laughs> well, I tried that uh, oxygen, uh, uh, not vaporizer, the uh, fogger. Mm hmm I did that this week, and boy, that goes fast. It goes fast, but you kind of hold your breath. I haven't seen the results on it. Uh, Joe May and a couple other students I've got is doing it, and they actually done uh, mite counts, and they said they're not even seeing mites. So Stephen's done it, I think, twice on our yards, but I haven't really got in there and, and checked it. It seems to go fast. He can do my yard here in about 35, 45 minutes. Where before I, I got a mask to put on, and uh, uh, I was lighting up my uh, a fogger, and it, and uh, sparker didn't work, so I took my uh, gas torch to light it, and and uh, I was trying to smell see if gas coming out. I couldn't even smell it, so that that really does work. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you got to have a mask on. Uh, I I didn't smell no vapors all the time I was doing that, uh, so it only took me about. 15 minutes to do those hives. Yeah. If it works and it's as good as everybody's saying it is, it's probably the best thing since sliced bread. Well, it get a little expensive buying that alcohol. I think that's 40 bucks for a half a gallon. So. Uh, well, that's a lot of drinking to do, too. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if a bee gets uh, high on that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, my son ain't bought that. He bought, uh, I don't guess it's a small bottle. It's $20. It looks like I used to call them a fifth, but everything's metric now, so I don't know what the size is. It's probably 10, 12 inches high and probably two and a half inches around. Yeah, well, but now it, it, you can it, use uh, moonshine, you know, if, if people make moonshine. I mean, I just, I guess alcohol is alcohol. You can drink some and treat some. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to destroy your liver, huh? <laughs> Okay, that's all I have. Well, okay. thank you, and I'll be uh, looking forward to meeting you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mike Morris, go ahead. Uh, yeah, hey, Don. Hey. Um, when I was up there with you a while back, you said we could take those uh, a couple of hives or, and, and a couple of bees and, and make a new split is, or to make a new queen. Uh, and that's what I did. So, am I doing that right? Are you getting queens? Well, I haven't yet, but I've got them separated. And well, I, if I you separate them, you know, there's a lot of ways to make some queens. Right. Uh, if you let them make them naturally, you're not risking no uh, none, none of your resources. If you right. manually do it, there's always going to be a bunch of flyback. So, okay. if you get cool nights and you don't have enough bees in there. You're going to get chill brood. You'll lose some of your brood. Okay. That's why I basically use a frame of honey. If worse yeah. comes to worse, the cell's no good, the bees leave, the other bees come and clean it out and put it in other hives. So 
That's okay. the worst. If you take a hive and split it two ways or three ways and you get a cold night and it get chill brood and then you lose the honey, you lose the brood and you lose a lot, you know, more. Right. I've just been taking one frame at a time. Yeah. Uh, and from different hives. And uh, I've been keeping an eye on them. I'm feeding them too, which yeah. brings up another thing. Uh, how, once you make that honey water, honey bee how, long can, how long can you keep it? I mean, sugar water. It's sh plain sugar water? Yeah. If you're making that better than two to one, you probably could keep it three, four weeks. Okay. Depending on your weather. If the weather's hot outside and you don't make it thick enough, it's going to ferment on you. Okay. You could probably put a, you know, I don't know what size you're mixing, five gallon or 50 gallon time? Right, five gallons. Five gallons. You probably could put a quarter of a teaspoon of bleach in there. It probably mm -hmm. wouldn't hurt it. Okay. I've heard of people using vinegar, but bleach is probably a lot better. I just increased my winter greening there, and it, okay. it won't ferment. Because bleach is the same thing as chlorine, and chlorine is pretty high in some swimming pools, and it don't kill the bees. Mm, okay. All right. So I can just, just keep doing what I'm doing, and it'll eventually work. Yep. Be okay. patient. I'm patient. I'm steady building. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. Uh, Joseph, go ahead. Don, no, you hey. about having a bad back. Have you ever tried uh, bee venom therapy? Have I ever did what? Have you ever tried bee venom therapy for your back? Huh. There ain't a part of my body ain't been stung. <laughs> I, uh, I got uh, CRPS and mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis, and I broke my back in the car wreck, got a bunch of damaged nerves and discs and stuff. Yeah. And I started bee venom therapy about uh, four days ago. I've stung up my back 40-something times since then. And uh, it's done way more for my back than anything I've done in over a decade of going to doctors. And I've been on $400 a month pain meds. And, I mean, it, it, it helps – it don't fit. It don't. It ain't got rid of it yet, but it, it it's helped enough that that forty stings on your back's worth it. <laughs> forty stings on your back. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday. I did twenty in one sitting. If you put ice on it for half a minute, to a minute before you do it, you can't even tell you've been stung. Well, how many, I can't. How many bee stings do you think a man like me gets a day? I don't know. I I. I've worked uh, the few hives I've got. I've gotten six on one hand in one day, so I imagine you've gotten quite a few. Like I was telling you before, it was overcast, drizzling. A couple of days ago, we was actually caging queens in the rain. So, you know, I don't even feel bee sting, so I don't think there's much more bee therapy that I can do. <laughs> right. I hear you. you. You need to come up to my place and walk around with me. As soon as I can afford it, I'm definitely going to be up there. I had those two flatlanders. They said that's what they was, flatlanders from Texas, and they was out of breath walking these hills. They said, you're 75? We're half that age. We can't keep up. I do want to ask you, I'm about to buy a fogger. Is there any particular fogger that you recommend? The old Burgess is probably the best of their green. Now, Burgess makes a black flag, which has got a bigger, uh, and it's yellow looking. Right. But as far as putting that alcohol in there for fog with oxalic acid, I think you need the green one. Okay. And then you have to use a, a glass jar. Stephen tried to use a small one, but the pump won't work on a small jar. So you're going to have to get at least a pint size, and then you have to keep filling it. So the difference between the yellow one and the green one is reservoir size, or, or what is it? I think the one, I'm not going to say for sure because we didn't try it. I think the yellow one's got a bigger opening at the bottom. Okay. I, well, I don't even think it's got an opening. I believe they fill it from the side. That's how often I've used it. And the one, the Burgess, the green one, you unscrew it from the bottom. It has a green container, and the threads on that's the same as a mason jar. So you're just looking for one that you can screw a jar into, basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I now, certainly appreciate it. I would get Burgess brand. I think they make another one. I can't think of the name of it. It's an off brand, and somebody else had bought it. It was cheap, but it don't hold up at all. All right. It might be one that Tractor Supply sells, I think. All right. I'll get one. I'll let you know how it works. Okay. All right. Ro, go ahead. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, 
Do you have packages available right now? Yeah, I just shook one today. You okay, come up here uh, and I'll shake them and I'll let you hold a funnel. <laughs> okay. Uh, we actually are thinking about doing that, coming up there just to save from uh, the, the trouble that go through shipping the way yeah. we can carefully drive them home. You'll love them bees a lot more when you hold a funnel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, <laughs> what time frame uh, do we need to make? If we wanted to do a couple-hour class while we were there, do we need to make an appointment for that? or? Just let me know you're coming because if my students and people that's coming, if I don't hear anything from by 10 o'clock, I'm either going to be out in my bee yard or I'm going to another yard to help Stephen out. Because right now we got probably five yards that a lot of those yards that we use for shaking are in three deeps and one medium super and some got two supers. So we probably got five or ten gallons of honey on each hive. We got to get off or make a bunch of splits with them. Oh, okay. So just call you the day before about 10 a.m.? No, call, call before or call the night before. Let me know you're coming. And let okay. me know what you want because we'll shake bees all summer. Okay. Springtime, early spring, March, uh, end of February, March, and up into April, we shake from our southern yards. And then now till August or November, we'll shake from this yard or one of our yards within a half an hour here. Okay. All right. And you're in the you're in Lula, Georgia, is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. That's it. All right, Anthony, go ahead. Maybe you guys are doing something wrong. I'm yet to get my first sting. <laughs> I'm very surprised I haven't got nailed yet, but these bees I have, they seem to be very calm, so that's a good thing. Yep. And for Joseph, um, they've been using bee stings for arthritis treatment for, I, I saw a special one, like a documentary thing, it was 20 years ago or more, where they you go and you they let the bee sting you. It's supposed to really help arthritis. So I'm not surprised you tell me you're feeling better. That's good. Well, um, I can tell you this, in the wintertime when I'm not working bees, usually... Uh, December, when it starts cooling down up into about the 1st of February, I move a lot slower, like like molasses, because everything on my body hurts. When I start getting stings, you know, I move better. Well, I have five discs in my back. Two of them are really bad and can't be operated on again. They've been operated on. And I've been on morphine for two years, and I just stopped morphine because I just don't want to be on opiates my whole life. And I just I'm going to try it. And I've been off of it for a month. And, um, you know, I'm uncomfortable. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about that. But, um, I think if, uh, if you're uh, taking pain medicine, now, it might just be all in my head. I'm 75, and I take an occasional Aleve or occasional aspirin. Occasional, but I eat mostly about a quart of honey a week. I put it in my coffee, and I get bee stings. And I'm not on any other kind of medicine. And people half my age usually got three to ten different type of prescription drugs. Mm. So, for what it's worth, I've been a beekeeper a long time, and I get a lot of stings. So I think I'm healthier than most people my age. Yeah, well, you sure look it. That's for sure. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Let someone else ask. Go ahead. Uh, let's get Darlene before she blows away over there. Uh-oh. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, lightning outside. Thank you. My mother-in-law is 96 years old. She wants to eat uh, beeswax in the honey every day. And I think that's what Don was referring to. Mm -hmm. that, um, and, and, and you talk to older, uh, younger people that remember the older ones in their family. They say they used to eat the beeswax every day. Um, and so thank you very much for that. I yeah. wanted to hear a little bit before we end about from Heather, because Don, I believe that you're a mentor for Heather and Heather was like overwhelmed with people coming over to her place and she's setting up a new place. And so I would really like to have a little bit of a conversation since we're getting ready to run out of time between you and Heather. Thank you very much. <laughs> she's bashful. You've got to, got to poke at her to get her to talk to you, but she makes beautiful signs. Everybody's been here has got their picture taken in front of that sign. 
I think she's very talented. She's very talented. But I'd like to you know how has her day gone this? I like hearing about her day last week because she invited people over. She couldn't get what she wanted to get done done. So Heather, <laughs> I'd like to know how was your day today and this week? Oh uh, well, my whole week I was in the beehives every day, every day. So it went good. <laughs> I'm caught up now. We did, um, we used the fogger method today to treat our, with oxalic acid and it was quick. We did 45 hives in like five minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> so my husband's in the background too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's been going really good. I've been working the bees every day. She I must have learned a few morning. things. Yeah. <laughs> That's been early in the morning now. <laughs> have you had any problems with your queens or have you had any concerns about, you know, your queens or anything like that? Uh, no, no, they're all doing good. Mm -mm. I, I don't following? think. What? You're following all of Don's methods? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I love it. Thank <laughs> you so very much. Yeah, all everything's right. going great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. New BP Keeper next week. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mike Morris, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Don answered my question a few minutes ago. I was uh, just wondering, uh, could I get some uh, bees in, in like July? Yeah. yeah okay. I'll see you all you can haul. All right. Sounds good. I'll see you. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, oh, Joe May made it on here, but I don't see his camera. Go ahead, Joe. No camera. No I don't camera. know. What, I don't know what happened to camera. <laughs> no, I lifted the beehive, probably. I didn't get in here just by time to go get started. You got to work them bees twenty four seven. About no, I I I had was invited to a bee club this week to give a talk, and that was on the fat bee man, <laughs> and I branched out from that. And there was a 94-year-old beekeeper there. He was a commercial honey, hunt, raised commercial for honey. And he came up after I was done, shook my hand. He said, Sonny, I learned something off of you. And I said, well, I took his card. I said, I'm going to come down and spend the day with you. <laughs> He'd been keeping bees for almost 70 years. So it was pretty neat. I think they all enjoyed it. So I'm sure they learned a little bit. I let a few tricks out. That's all I got. That's what we need to do, share our information with one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tim Harmon, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, Don, I've got a, uh, you know, you've always talked about whenever, don't use too many bees, like a couple of bees to get the, uh, to the queen hatches because she may run off. Yeah. Well, I um, put mine several weeks back, uh, my big, the big hive I had, I told you about it. I split it off twice. Well, one of them took, and sure enough, uh, I had one of them. They was doing good for about a week. And, um, uh, I went in, me and my grandson went in there and there wasn't a bee one in it. So she must've went out and made it and kept going. So I brought the hive in, cleaned it up. I'm fixing to go back and try to find another cell to put in it. So I see what you mean now. <laughs> That's why you do it that method. You lose less bees. Yeah, and I would put what I did was I took the uh, hive, the frame, could I say, the frame that had the cell on it, and I just transferred it to the little nuke, or uh, not a little nuke, but to the uh, nuke, and I took another uh, frame of uh, honey and two um, bear frames, and I let the tenant, the tenant bees on the frame that had the queen cell tend to the queen and uh, it was worrying this looked like he's doing real well then i went back and there wasn't a big one in there so i figured might as well clean it up and do it again so i'm learning i'm learning a lot from you and hard knocks hard knocks teach you real quick sure does <laughs> that's all i had to say thank you sir okay i think we are all caught up and i believe it is nine o'clock so we can call it a night Okay, at least the power didn't go off. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Don. Okay, everybody. Have a good evening. Appreciate you showing up. See you next week.